Uh, okay, so from fume to uh. Oh, and by the way, I'm not gonna cover all the fume stuff. Um. I mean, all of it by saying you know how it works and whatnot. We could just uh. I don't know, I'm just going to assume that you have some kind of knowledge of it. <clears throat> and that'll be that. So, okay. Jump into my camera view again. Remember C on the keyboard. Um, open up our layers manager. I don't know the shortcut for that, by the way. If someone knows that shortcut, let me know because I hate going to the bar here. Usually, when I work, I work in expert mode, which is um, if you hit Control X on your keyboard, it allows you to, uh, you know, do all the. Um, stuff you want just to mouse clicks and uh, keyboard shortcuts all right again camera so we're gonna close our fume or hide it not close it and we're gonna go to um, shells is what I call it and you see as soon as I open that you get some things that um the components to it, which is, uh, you know, obviously, I have a gravity space warp in there, collision, uh, a, you know, a collision thing, and um, two of these pop open, which is um, particle flow sources. Um, as you can see, they're labeled, which is very important when dealing with particle flow. Shells left, shells right, and to bring up. P flow, you can hit six on your keyboard, which I'm going to try to stay away from shortcuts now since you guys can't see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go the long way, which is you select, you know, uh, your P flow, and then you click on particle view over here. And it's good to uh, popped up actually on this screen. I didn't think it would. I forgot I was working on this on my laptop. But, um, so this is our P flow tree setup. Um, this is where all the um, the particle you know happenings go. Um, for this one, we have the shells left and right. It makes sense. I did these ones first, which means that they'll be at the top left. Is how I set it up. Obviously, left to right. It's like reading, so it feels more natural that way. So uh, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail how this was set up. Um, I want to assume that you guys know, or at least, you know, I hope that you're not watching this as a tutorial, but more of a how I did it kind of thing. So, um, normally I would just keep this on the right screen, because this takes up a lot of screen real estate. Um, so for now, I'm just going to crush it down like that. And, uh, we have the shells that deploy along with the firing. I have it now set to particles or just looking like uh, dots you can do that obviously through the display mm, dots now I actually modeled out a shell casing and I used it as an instance for a shape instance um, oh, that's that but if we wanted to switch it from dots to geometry which will show us the actual shell casings themselves we can do that you get a not a hundred percent accurate preview but um as you can see these things are low poly but well not as low poly as they actually probably should be but we're able to work with it here um so we get those and when they when they um when they come out originally i have them just set to aim a certain way the way they would aim if they were be as if they were actually spent shells the um damn it. so once they hit the ground though that's when um sorry I'm opening another pack of cigarettes I'm all out um 
once they hit the ground, of course, they would get some random spin and whatever else to them. That helps with the, the realism of it. Um, also, I don't have them just lay there for all of eternity because they would just take up a lot of polys that are unnecessary. So you see, once they hit the ground plane, they spin off in different directions. And I have the, the collision uh, operator set to... Uh, well, immediately on first collision with this uh, collision plane, that just sends it to the next event, which is event 02 here, and I didn't bother renaming these ones. It's really quite embarrassing, you should. But um, once they hit that, then it, uh, they bounce up, you know, the gravity kicks in again, uh, the collision kicks in again, but only this time I have it set to, uh, I guess collides indefinitely until the delete function kicks in. Delete will kick in anywhere from 50 frames to, well, 50 frames with a variation of 25, which means anywhere from 25 frames to 75 frames. So they don't all die um, at the same time. They don't all bounce at the same height. They don't all spin the same way. It just helps with a really, it gives it a good random feel, which is... Good, that's what you want, because none of these two things are going to bounce the exact same way. And, uh, I guess that's it for, I think I'm right, uh, yeah, I, I, that's it for the, um, well, without describing what well, the different operators in the list here do. Just a brief rundown.